question from from me, if I may, on the conduct yes. of the war thus far. Um, what international law allows Israel to deprive an entire population of water and electricity? No international law would allow that, but we have also not done that. Israel supplies two water lines into Gaza. One of those water lines, by the way, came under attack from Hamas from a mortar, and we had to fix it under fire. We're continuing to supply water, and our obligations under international law are to facilitate the provision of life-saving humanitarian aid necessary for the civilian population. We have been doing that, and we want to see as much food, water, So you're uh, saying we didn't cut off the entire population from water and electricity? Absolutely not. On October 7th, Hamas fired, I I think, over 3,000 rockets in the space of a few hours that took down the electricity grid that was providing electricity from Israel to the Gaza Strip. But since you mentioned humanitarian law, no, no, Tom, because you mentioned humanitarian law. I know what you're going to go into about hospitals. I understand that. But when Israeli ministers... No, 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 no. It's a different point, Tom. Let me ask you about... It's a different point. Let me ask you about... You asked me about international law, and I would like to explain it. The fear that people have about what it is that Israel is really seeking to do. Uh, An Israeli minister within the government said that one of the options that the Israeli military had would be to drop a nuclear bomb on the Gaza Strip. You can see, I presume, with comments like that, why people are worried about, scared of, what it is Israel could do. First of all, that was a daft statement, and the prime minister said immediately that it has absolutely no connection to reality. But as for the question of humanitarian law, because I think it's important, and we take international law very seriously, we know our obligations and we know our rights, Hamas is a territory controlled by a terror organization openly sworn to the destruction of our country. Mm -hmm. There is no requirement in international law for a state that has been attacked in a war to continue supplying enemy territory with electricity or fuel. That does not exist in international law. In fact, there is no but precedent. But not all Gazans are enemies, are they? Or are they? No, no. But under international law, you mentioned international law, there is no obligation for a country that has come under attack by enemy held territory to provide the fuel that is then being put into rockets to be fired and to be to, to hit our people. So we're committed to allowing the provision of humanitarian aid through Egypt. That is going through. There are no limitations on our part. We've more than doubled our capacity to inspect the humanitarian aid. That's entering through Egypt. And it's important that that humanitarian aid reach the civilians who need it in a way that mm. ensures that Hamas cannot steal it. Let me come to another call before we finish. I know we haven't got long with you. Shahada is in Beckenham. Shahada, your question. I just want to say, Levi, you stated question of reality. The reality is the beheading, the rape has been debunked by Haaretz, BBC, me? CNN. That is Excuse. the truth. That you are spreading your lies. Your Apache, a Haaretz newspaper has even stated Apache helicopters killed their own civilians. That is a fact. Anybody here watching, look it up. The question of reality, Israel is illegally occupied. It did not start in October the 7th. People are researching history. Shahada, what's your question? They're not just history context. Shahada, what's your question, please? Please get to the question. My question is, do you validate your stories? And so why are newspapers debunking your stories? Mr Levy. Tom, you've watched that video of the 40... Three minutes of Hamas atrocities captured on CCTV and have. GoPros, haven't you? I have. What have you seen? I've seen the beheading of people by Hamas. I saw the beheading of a soldier by Hamas with the face of the soldier unpixelated. Um, and the entire video is the most brutal, horrific thing I have ever witnessed. I think Shahada's point is the story about the 40 beheaded, the 40 beheaded babies. Is that still a story that has any truth to it when I think the, the the Biden administration certainly has resiled from it. Tom, the sad truth is children were beheaded on October 7th. And we have that from multiple eyewitnesses. The heads of two civilian rescue services and the military rescue services who say we literally carried beheaded children with our own hands. But apart from that, you saw in that video the photos of the burned babies. Mm -hmm. Not only the burned adults. I saw that video. I had to ask for it to be stopped at one point because it looked like there was simply a lump of coal on the screen. And that was someone's baby. Those were the atrocities that Hamas perpetrated on October 7th. Those were the atrocities that people celebrated around the world on October Mm -hmm. 7th, as if this was some sort of glorious act of resistance. And any attempt to deny the evidence 
including the evidence that Hamas filmed on its own GoPros because it is proud of that violence, is peddling Holocaust denial like lies about the atrocities of Hamas, I think by people who are struggling to believe that their heroes are capable of such horrific crimes well, against humanity. Shahada and it is that. those crimes against tell humanity Shahada that, that we Mr. are Levy. defending tell, ourselves. Tell Shahada that. Shahada, I think you should be ashamed of yourself for denying the atrocities of October 7th. Palestinian babies. Why are we not talking about that? I think you should that? be ashamed of yourself. You talk I think about you should be ashamed of yourself. Can I just speak for a minute, please? Palestinians are just referred to as collateral damage. That's what they refer to. And with that same logic, one could argue Israelis are collateral damage. Why not? If we talk about equality, that's war. That's what we're told. It's a cloud of war. Yet one person is collateral damage and the other person is an innocent civilian. You're denying international law. You're not above the law. And that's why millions of us are going to protest tomorrow around the world. Millions of us. But Shahada, you agree. You agree that the terrorism committed by Hamas, you agree that that needs a response from Israel? It's not a proportional response. Who can say that's proportional? Killing civilians, women and children, starving them of water, gas and electricity. That is inhumane. Mr. Levy. Shahada, you've covered a lot of ground with that Holocaust denial uh, like lies where you denied the atrocity that Hamas committed on October 7th. Then I think try to take it. Then try to take it in a different direction. Well, she absolutely did with those stories she was saying, saying that it was made up. Look, what happened on October 7th was that Hamas deliberately targeted civilians in an act of systematic extermination. Its death squads invaded Israel, hunting civilians to kill. They committed acts of mass rape. They burned whole families. In one home, a rescuer said that the father had his eyes gouged out, the mother had her breast chopped off, the little girl had her fingers cut off, and then a little boy had his foot cut off, and then the terrorists sat down to have dinner, to have lunch around their table. They burned people, they beheaded people, they tortured them, and they systematically targeted civilians. And in response to that, we are systematically targeting the Hamas terrorists who did that. We are targeting the monsters who perpetrated the deadliest and most sadistic but massacre of Jews since October with the manner in which this is being done by 7th. Israel? And I'm explaining. Would and that we are doing change? everything we can to get civilians out of harm's way. Unfortunately, that is very difficult. Because Hamas's strategy over the last 16 years has been to embed itself in civilian areas. We found tunnel shafts underneath children's beds rockets factories inside mosques, a command center underneath a hospital. And that's why we spent a month going blue in the face, urging civilians to evacuate. It's why we operated humanitarian corridors with our own soldiers getting attacked with RPGs by Hamas, trying to get civilians out of harm's way because we do not want them to be hurt. Okay. Civilian to... casualties, if I can finish this you point, can. I'm a... You, but I'm are a tragic feature long. of every war. And unfortunately, they are a tragic feature of this war that Hamas declared on us with the October 7th massacre and this war that we are going to win and that we're going to end. And we're going to end in a way that brings security for the people of Israel and new opportunities for Palestinians who understand that terrorism is always a dead end.